Madam President, few of us can aspire to the fame and fortune that are signified when a celebrity is known by just one name. There's Cher, there was Prince, there's Madonna, and there is Stu. Everybody knows Stu. Not Don Stewart, certainly not Don, just Stu. For more than 12 years, Stu has been the larger-than-life personality patrolling the Ohio clock corridor, camping out in the press gallery, and prowling the hallways of the Capitol complex. The guy who knows everything about policy, procedure, and communications with the office just off the Senate floor. Stu is one of the best-known staff members in all of Congress. It's been my great fortune to lean heavily on him every single day for more than a decade as my communications director and deputy chief of staff. So you can imagine it's proving difficult to grasp that today, the very last workday, I'll have Stu by my side. After serving so well for so long, he's taking a leave for, shall we say, greener pastures. So this morning, I'm exacting a little revenge. I'm doing the one thing that I suspect will make my deputy chief of staff's stomach churn more than anything else. I'm actually turning the spotlight on him. Now, the complete legend of Stu is somewhat of a winding tale. The scrappy son of Riverside, California, <clears throat> did not, <clears throat> the scrappy son of Riverside, California, did not stroll a typical path to the corridors of power. What came after high school was work, including what I understand was a spell as a bouncer. I'm certain that position offered no useful preparation at all <clears throat> for wrangling our distinguished friends in the press corps. <clears throat> then came Army service, then back to school in Georgia, and then, Madam President, politics. Our late colleague, Senator Coverdale, hired Stu to represent him with his constituents down in Georgia. Not long after, he asked him to relocate to Washington. Now, the way I understand it, the ink was barely dry on Stu's lease, and the unpacking had just started when his boss tragically passed away. But Stu landed on his feet. He found his way to a pair of tough Texans, handling press for Senator Phil Graham and then Senator Cornyn. He became famous as the communications director who could outsmart everybody and outwork everybody in a town where it's very hard to do either. That's where Stu caught my eye. As I prepared in 26 for the possibility of becoming a Republican leader, I knew we'd need the most sophisticated, <clears throat> I knew we'd need the most sophisticated communication, communication shop a Senate leader had ever constructed. And it was clear that Stu was the guy to build it. <clears throat> Something else quickly became clear, too. Stu was not quite like anybody else any of us had ever met before. One former colleague <clears throat> recalls that Stu would end a phone call with a plan already formed in his mind, then push off his desk with both hands, sending his rolling chair rocketing backwards and slamming into the wall behind him. The high-octane crash was the official notification that Stu was about to make something happen. It was actually really endearing, this colleague explained, in retrospect. <clears throat> Restless energy has always been Stu's calling card. Every news story, every request from reporters, every shift in public sentiment, Stu was literally on top of it all. Seven days a week, almost literally 24 hours a day. I was recently reminded that in Stu's early days with me, some around the Capitol questioned whether he was an actual person or some kind of automated email system our office had built to blast out memos and bulletins literally around the clock. The instant that mobile devices started to provide email alerts, Stu's bat-like sleeping habits and inexhaustible work ethic 
probably rendered half the alarm clocks in Washington completely obsolete. Questions, answers, press clippings, battle plans, they'd pour into inboxes until after midnight, pause for a couple of hours, and resume before anyone else had even woken up. But Kirkadian rhythms aren't the only thing Stu's presence reprogrammed. His energy, his careful foresight, his patriotism, all these things were just as infectious. As our chief spokesman, key strategist, and close advisor, team leader, and morale builder, resident dog lover, heavy metal music aficionado, and happy warrior, Stu helped steer me and my office through the Iraq War, the financial crisis, seismic policy battles, and nomination debates. Three different presidents and two re-election campaigns. No matter what the day brought, I always knew what my deputy chief of staff would bring. Razor sharp instincts, a level head, a steady hand, and a boatload of integrity. So for more than 12 years, I entrusted Stu with my words and my goals and my reputation. And he's never let me down. He never flagged, he never slowed, Our watchdog never lost a step. Totally trustworthy, completely reliable, unbelievably competent, the greatest luxury a leader could have. Now, with these characteristics, you might think the person I'm describing could be a little stiff, a little stern. Maybe that energy would occasionally boil over into harsh words or heated moments. But remember, Madam President, Stu is a bit of an unusual guy. That intensity doesn't overflow into frustration or unkindness or sharp words. Instead, it overflows into generosity, good-heartedness, and compassion. <clears throat> so Stu is famous around Washington for his encyclopedic memory of birthdays, kids' birthdays, and anniversaries. Like clockwork, notes and greeting cards arrive, texts and emails roll in. What I'm saying is that work challenges aren't the only thing Stu is good at keeping in perspective. I was reminded of that fact a few months back. I was reminded of that fact a few months back when Stu brought his mother, Nancy, to visit here in the Senate. For all the history Stu has helped make for every victory when he's allowed himself a brief smile, his colleagues aren't sure they've ever seen him happier than when he was ushering his mom around the corridors and showing her all he's built. And for all Stu's own accomplishments, we aren't sure we've ever seen him prouder than when he brags on his daughter, Kylie. Lately, that's meant her career in software engineering and the apps she's created. Stu loves his family, he's loyal to his family, it's just our good luck that he came to see the Senate as part of that family as well. My former chief of staff reminded me of the day he brought his boys to work. Stu loves kids, so he made a beeline, but one son felt a little shy. Instead of shrugging and walking away, it somehow occurred to Stu to say this, did you know I can do a standing jump right onto that table right there? One more time, for good measure, Madam President, this is kind of a unique individual. The boy was understandably perplexed, but then his friendly stranger crouched down and leapt right up onto the table, tie, dress shoes, and everything, a total spectacle, just to put that young man at ease and coax a smile, not your typical Senate moment. But that's the thing. For me, for all Stu's colleagues, the level of good cheer, concern for others, really has been typical for a dozen years. That's why his departure has triggered an avalanche of tributes from people all over Washington and beyond, people, many of them junior people, whom he wrote back with advice, met for coffee, shared some wisdom. This sprawling family tree of men and women who all feel that one way or another, they owe a significant part of their success 
and careers to him. And on that note, Madam President, I have to say I know exactly how they feel. So today I have to say goodbye to an all-star staff leader who took his job about as seriously as anybody you will ever meet. But who took himself far less seriously than most people you'll ever meet in the process. Professional excellence and personal humility are rare virtues. Having a heavy dose of either one is impressive, but only the combination can explain Stu. There are plenty of people in this town who haven't tackled nearly the challenges or rubbed nearly the elbows that he has, but you better believe their egos dwarf his. Now look, his resume looks like he belongs in a fancy uh, cocktail parties in Tony neighborhoods, but I'm not positive Stu would even be allowed into a fancy cocktail party. And regardless, I doubt he'd find much time for the elite guests. He'd be too engrossed in conversation with the security guards, valet parking attendants, hospitality staff, taking nationals, baseball, and everything else under the sun with the people who actually made the thing go. Never before yesterday have I seen a large number of Capitol Police officers gather to surprise a departing Senate staffer and send him off as if he were one of their own. That is the admiration and love that Stu has for the men and women who keep us safe and vice versa. I know nothing I say today will, com will really compete with that tribute. The only kind of man who would earn that sort of salute is the kind of man who would prize it above and beyond any fancy praise offered in a place like this. <coughs> so don't get me wrong, Stu reveres this institution, but he never once seemed to covet the trappings or the power for its own sake. He just seemed honored to serve. So my colleagues and I are sad to bid farewell to the Senate staffer who made himself thoroughly famous by trying not to make himself famous. We're sorry to part with our tough-talking workaholic who can't bypass a cute puppy without stopping for a good scratch and a photo shoot. And we will sorely miss our true blue patriot who so loves this country, where a kid can grow up from working odd jobs to counseling senators and statesmen and not lose an ounce of his character along the way. So, Stu, we can't quite imagine the place without you, but we're so grateful for what you've made it while you were here. Happy trails, buddy. <laughs>